Nice. And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, where not only do I start the podcast when people aren't ready, that I don't actually unmute the channel so that we're just standing here talking without audio like idiots. <laughs> oh With us this my. week, we have oh Eric. Oh my. <laughs> we have a fantastic start. <laughs> Holy wow. shit. Holy fuck. This is a good one. This is good. <laughs> so that was a 72 Ben Connector podcast. Thank you for tuning in. You can catch us every Saturday at around 6 p.m. PST. Yeah. So <laughs> this, this has been fun. How's it going, fellas? <laughs> the outro's going. We're out. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> that, was, that was it. That was so oh my god. Okay, this week, legitimately, this week has been absolutely busy for me. Really? Like, I have gotten a, such a small amount of time to do anything except go to work. It's insane. I'm noticing a trend uh, here. Yeah, I know. I, it's the busy season. It it always happens this time of year. That's to be it's my busy I've, season, I should say. Yeah. Has I've it been the same for you, Eric? time. Nah, oh. I, I, I work eights. Fuck that. I don't work <laughs> eights when there's production issues, but I work eights. I like that style. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I would like to work eights this week. It just didn't happen. I'd actually like to work sixes, but I'd know. like to work twos. Twos would be fantastic. I, I'm a fan of uh, tens or twelves. Jesus Christ! But that also oh. comes that comes with four and or six day or three days though, like four days of ten. Hell yes. Yeah, I could see that. I'll tell you three what's awful weekend, every day is uh, is those those paramedic hours. So they usually do like forty eight on, forty eight off, or something nuts like that. So you literally work multiple days in a row without a break like if you get called and you have slept for three hours well guess fucking what <laughs> um and then you get a couple days off so mm, weekends nope. all the time i guess no thanks no nah, i'm good i mean come because... on you get paid really high wages like it's it's at least six dollars per hour <laughs> i'm sure if it's more okay. than that tom no it's not actually paramedics get paid like shit I have had that's, several family members do that as a profession. Is that not under the, the federal minimum wage? Okay, it's like seven fifty, but like it's <laughs> literally, it's not much better. Tom it's, doesn't it's know what almost, the word literally means. I think it's literally <laughs> is the literally, issue. That is literally, literally, the literally issue minimum sure. wage. Yeah, literally minimum wage. Yeah, that's messed and up. Not, but it's it's cool. You're only literally saving people's lives, putting out fires, stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, nah, minimum wage is cool. Yeah, that's messed up. But anyway, yeah. I've been playing video games. Hey, me too. I've been doing mostly that. A little bit of cooking, mostly that. Oh yeah, what you cooking? Make? I'm 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 officially done with ribeyes. I don't care what Are anyone you? says. I don't think what? they're that great. I think they're overblown. What? Mm, I disagree. I like you're the, entitled to your opinion. I like the flavor of a sirloin better, and a tenderloin's more more tender. Like it doesn't check the boxes best in any field. Hmm. Okay. You see, so, I love me a good ribeye. As a matter of fact, I need to get one of those this weekend because now I've got a craving. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take a good sirloin or a good filet. Either one. I'm going to try strip again just to check to make sure. Oh, New York strip is the bomb. I fucking love me a good New York strip. I got going to try that one more time. I'm Since I've kind of got the sous vide thing down, I'm kind of going around and making sure like okay i know i like this cut i like that cut i fucked this one up in the past i want to try it right to make sure yeah because the nice thing is ruling out ribeyes i mean and liking sirloins that's a cheaper cut i like liking cheaper cuts <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is a good place to be yeah it's got good flavor it's tougher but it's really well flavored but yeah um that's it I, I I don't have anything else to go so someone can oh, wow. kind of. All right. Oh okay. Well then. Yeah, I, I didn't have anything else. I was, was gonna it. have I was going to have a really cool um, cooking thing to talk about and then I didn't make the thing I was gonna make. 
Oh. <laughs> but I was going I, to make um, a dish called Fesenjun. I'm probably pronouncing that very wrong. Um, it's like an Iranian pomegranate walnut stew chicken thing. What? Huh. That sounds really good. Yeah, I've heard I'm it's fantastic. Intrigued. It's um, actually the first time I ever heard about it was from RS. Actually, hmm. uh, he he recommended that if I were to try any like Persian food or whatever, try that first. So I was gonna make it, and nice. give it a shot, and then I got lazy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have all the things I needed. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that lazy life when it comes to cooking for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz it's something you, it's not something you can just like whip up real quick. It's one of those you got to let it simmer for like an hour to reduce kind of thing. So, it's probably you, like if a you're gonna two, do, 2 to 3 hour dish. And if you're going to do something like that, you're going to make sure to pay attention, get it done right, have all the ingredients, have it all prepped properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it doesn't look hard to make at all. It just takes a while. That's you just good. Gotta, just letting everything reduce like crazy for multiple hours. It's uh, it's getting into crock pot season for me, so I'm uh, I'm looking at beef stews. I'm looking at whatever I can throw into a pot for eight hours and walk away and get dinner. I am. Um, oh, I did do something else. Cook. I made mac and cheese. Oh yeah, you sent time. me the you sent me a video of that, which by the way made me very very hungry. <laughs> so so I kind of didn't appreciate that, but. So I did the thing where you cook all the noodles. I had the cheese sauce that I had made mm -hmm. and then got a video of pouring the cheese sauce onto the noodles. Oh my God. And it, it did that layer kind of shit like you see in the commercials. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, it was stringy and like you could see the whole stretching through the cheese as it draped it onto the noodles. Mm. However, that said, I didn't have, the flavor was mediocre. It oh. wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. So oh, next God, time I'm going to try it. More cheese, slightly less flour. Because yeah, like, like yeah, a flowery taste to it. No, no, there wasn't really a flowery taste. Just the cheese wasn't as pronounced as I was hoping. Okay. Oh, because even the roux, like I, I seasoned the roux. So like I had garlic powder and that onion powder and that. That way, like even the roux itself wasn't super flowery tasting. Ooh. And then from there, I just added, all I had was mild cheddar. So I think jumping up to sharp cheddar will help kind of bring that out and maybe like some Colby or something. Yeah, yeah it sounds... works. So it was my first ever time making a cheese sauce and I was pleasantly surprised with like, it turned out decent for the first time trying it. I'm used to the first time I try that kind of shit. I really botch it. Yeah, it could go wrong. Anything with a roux like that, like if you're not good at making roux, I imagine that would be a, a very critical an easy thing to mess up. I don't up. even know why you'd eat yeah. kangaroo. Like, <laughs> what did that add to the mac and cheese? I mean, Adam could speak to that. Uh, yeah, I've actually had kangaroo. Oh, wow. All right. How <laughs> it's is it? It's delicious. It's really, really good, actually. <laughs> so that's why All you right. would have kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah, we had it at, um, actually in Columbus. We went to this, I can't remember what it was called. Some kind of really fancy like kind of place, actually. A fancy ass um, bistro that we thought was gonna throw us out. Yeah. <laughs> like the okay, let me the guy at the door had like a was was dressed nice. They had a fucking major and, and he had like the towel over his arm draped down draped down, like one of those Christ. types. And he was like, What are you so guys we doing? <laughs> Get in here. We we've got food, we've got beer. Get in here. So we're like, <laughs> well, okay. Because we initially like went in because someone needed to go to the restroom. And then we saw how nice the place was. And we're like, fuck, dude, we need to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And when he came out, like he came out the door after us. So we thought he was going to yell at us because we're in jeans and a t-shirt, man. And Ooh. everyone is to the nines in this place. And he's like, what do you guys think you're doing? And that's when I'm like, oh, it's coming. He's like, we got food. We got beer. Get in here. I'm like, what the fuck? That guy was hey, cool. Man, that guy knows shout that your that dollars guy. are just as good as anybody else's yep. dollars. Shout out, to that, shout out to that guy because that was a fantastic meal and a good experience. And, you know, we're bringing it up still to this day. So it's it was also yeah. a memorable one. So yeah, Kang have... Kangaroo was fantastic. It was like, um, uh, like it was, it was uh, sort of an appetizer, but it was like medallions and this 
like black pepper honey sauce. Ooh, it was fantastic. That was sounds so really good. good. Because a buddy we were with was <laughs> we were looking at the menu and he's like, "Wait, they have kangaroo?" <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "This is." It was expensive, and he's like, "This is expensive, but I can't not get kangaroo." You don't see that on a yeah. menu every day. When when are you gonna have a chance to get kangaroo again? Like exactly. seriously. Yeah. Well, we're going to uh, New Zealand for our honeymoon, quite delayed. So hopefully, at that point, we'll uh, be able to get some kangaroo. Oh my god, that'll be fantastic! New Zealand is beautiful. I would love to go. Yeah. Enjoy. Are you gonna go see um the Shire? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I well, figured you yeah. would. You have to. You're legally That's required. Cool. Yeah, if you're going to go all the way down there and you're any, if you're even semi interested in the Lord of the Rings stuff, you have to go to there. Yeah. But yeah, um, Kangaroo, that was cool. So, fellas, um, games? Games? No. Games. No. I played some Phasmo. That was fun. Hey, we, uh, yeah. We ran somebody through, actually, we ran two people through their very first game ever, which was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. nice. How'd it they do? it was interesting. They, they did pretty well. Um, so I forgot how scary phasmophobia is if you're not used to it. Like, if you haven't put in the, the 40 hours to internalize everything that can happen in that game, it's straight up like unsettling walking into those haunted houses. Um, so yeah, it was, it was cool to, to get reminded that, Hey, yeah, we were, we were just that scared, <laughs> you know, 40 hours so, ago. So Tom and I, and one of his buddies were at the high school and his buddy, like his anxiety's kicking in. Cause it was getting some creepy shit. And uh, he was out in the truck and we're like, Hey man, can you bring us in a camera? We need a camera. He's like, okay. He gets to the door. The door slams in his face. A hunt starts. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, like Tom and I are on the inside. We're like, okay, go to this room, shut the door, hide in the corner, blah, blah, blah. Outside, you just hear him saying, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> it was nope, not a shot in hell. Nope, not doing that. I'm heading back. You guys can get your own camera. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. And then to follow fantastic. that up, to follow that up, it was probably the creepiest atmosphere haunt possible. And we had an attic uh, haunt oh. in the farmhouse. Attic farmhouse is attic. the best. Literally the worst type you could ever imagine. Because it's so hard to do because it's such a big area. It's so easy to get trapped in a hunt. It's actually like even after 40 hours plus in the game, it is a hard room to navigate for a haunt. Yeah. Because yeah, like, like we didn't realize area, it until after. There's no area for fingerprints in that area. Like they have to wander downstairs and hit a light for a oh. fingerprint. I didn't think yeah, about because that. Because there's nothing up there for prints. Wait, there's not a now light switch at the top of the stairs? Nope. The nope. bottom of the stairs oh. only. Oh. Okay. And to smudge, we smudged it three different times to actually get the achievement for the or the challenge for the smudge. Because the area is so big, you actually have to be in proximity of the ghost. And the ghost is using the entire attic. Yeah, that I but we had to difficult. wait. Well that we had to wait to see too. him to smudge him. Yeah, yeah we got haunted a few times. Bad. <laughs> also, I, I, I think that say. right there, that right there, what we're discussing right now is the kind of shit that we've come to describe with the game. This is the stuff that we go to with the game. Having the new players in there, this conversation doesn't happen. They're not mm -hmm. thinking of the game this way. And that's where like it's refreshing to see their reactions because they're still experiencing it as a straight-up horror game. Yeah. Where we experience it more like a mystery problem solving game. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. the fear is gone. You know how the systems work, which takes away the fear. Um, yes. Yeah. You you still get, I don't want to say spooked, but like the shock horror happens every once in a while because all oh, of a sudden, yeah. it's going to be spawned in front of my face. Yeah. Oh I my God. Urk, Urk got gone. So we were, <laughs> God, we, were God. In, we were in that first floor basement like street house road house place right and Urk was sitting there in the family room it was a family room ghost he was sitting there he had his camera and i i was on the other side like i was at the front door watching this happen the ghost spawns 
in the hallway right next to him. Urk is like around this corner. He can't see. Blind fucking corner. And the ghost appears and takes two steps out and just turns at Urk. And I just hear this, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. And it was <laughs> right there in front of him. It was fantastic. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff still. But I, I don't associate shock horror as the same as just general horror. Like, Oh, yeah, no. Also, there's could, a difference between shock horror isn't, I don't think, the term for what you're jump talking about. Jump scares. Yeah, you're talking it's about jump scares and being startled and stuff. Shock horror is a different thing. Yeah. Is that more like bodily harm kind of bullshit? Like or, stuff that is like, like meant to be so grotesque home. that I don't know. Uh, like, okay, like, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you I were having a conversation same as like shock humor, it's the same as shock humor. Yeah, if you're like, having a conversation during a podcast and somebody said, I'm giving up on ribeyes. That would be a perfect example. Yeah. Like, this is so offensive that I just can't process it. Yeah. That's an overhyped <laughs> cut. Get over it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't need to get too much deeper. It's just, it's refreshing to see a new player to get associated with, like, this is how they experience it. Mm-hmm. As Proto Tricks calls out in chat, that first hunt's scary as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's first hunt is like, what the fuck's going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. everyone's first death is just the worst. And that that didn't happen. We didn't have any new players die. Oh, really? I don't think. They survived. That's good. We had Tom die. And oh, we buried yeah, the lead. I, I died. There was an update. Dead people oh, yeah. can now interact with items. Hey, so, so, cool. I died. I'm, we I think we talked about this. Like, not the, yes. that it was happening, but we talked about it as a, a good idea. Yeah. Yes. It was. It is. So I'm hiding in the hunt in the bathroom. Tom, because, you know, there's no doors for people that are dead, grabs a knife, comes in the room, and starts doing the stabby stabby, walking oh. around the room in front of <laughs> so me. So you just see a floating knife? Is that just how that doing works? stab, stab, stab. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and I'm, for me, it's like, I know what's going on. So I'm like, Tom, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> but there's videos of people that don't understand that part of the patch yet. Oh, and uh, people in VR grabbing shoes and walking shoes out of the house into the truck <laughs> in public lobbies and just hearing the people like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I love it so That's a great much. Idea. So uh, I worry, though, that people are going to think there are more poltergeists than there are poltergeists potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where like public lobbies, that's going to be a bad thing. Yeah. But private lobbies, you kind of know who you're playing with. And if you're playing with me and shit starts moving, yeah, it's, it's just me. It's Tom. (laughs) He's a troll. Also, I think we called something early too, um, a few handfuls of podcasts ago. Uh, They're working on a prison level for sure now. Yep. Yeah. I, I feel that pretty much um, we're, we're on the pulse of this fucking game pretty well. Yeah. Even before they announce shit or decide shit, we know they're going to do it <laughs> because it's just a good idea. We're mind linked. Hell yeah. Secretly, I made the game. Really, that's what's going on. Oh, no. okay. Um, well, fix the bugs, please. <laughs> he's been doing pretty good. If you could make the yeah. run speed just a little faster, that'd be great. Okay. Everyone I've ever played with is commented on how slow that fucking run is. I disagree with the run speed, mostly because it adds to the tension, knowing that you have to slowly plod your way out of there. Yeah, if you I, I like it in that yourself, respect, but I also wonder how it would play out if you could run like a normal running speed in normal games, but then the ghosts also move at that running yes. speed. Yeah. Yes, I would love that because to that, me, it's not an advantage. It's a nuisance to me. Mm-hmm. It's a, I want to get to other places faster. I don't care if the ghost can too. I just mm-hmm. want to. Now, I don't know if that would make the game better or worse or what that would take away from the slow movement because that, like Tom said, that does add something. Like it's a detective game. It's not a, a run and yes. know, run around like crazy and do a bunch of stuff game. That is true. Although, although when are the mods coming out to give us Ghostbusters gear? <laughs> Probably a slip crap. Like... <laughs> Which okay. is actually a lie. I'm terrified of the ghost. Yeah. Also, once COVID's done, we need to do a haunted house, like a real haunted house thing. Like, hey, we're going to leave us there overnight. I'm okay with that. Oh, that kind. Okay. Yeah. A real, real, real type. 
What's that abandoned prison that, that they do tours of and stuff now? Alcatraz? Maybe. I know that there's Alcatraz. I thought tours. there was one like sort of close ish to where I live. Oh, I know there there is an abandoned building that they do that with, but oh, either way, Phasmo, yeah. awesome game, cool game. Yeah, you know what else is a fantastic game that's still on a churning? Dota two. No, and holy it's shit! Game. It is the worst I've, game I've ever played. This week, God, I, hate Dota. I have been around some of the nicest people I've met on Dota. Like legit, oh. genuinely good dudes. Who aren't complete assholes while we're losing. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> all the assholes I've been running into in this game have been on Dire Tide. That's the Rocket League equivalent Dire to only Tide? finding tri- it's a Rocket League equivalent of only finding die or uh, tryhards in fucking Rumble. <laughs> so like that's the only place I've been finding scumbags. Like, okay, the very last game Tom, Scott, and I played, we kicked ass. But yeah, I had one I needed one more thing for this achievement I was working on and the other team had to set it up for me. So they're all the way in their base. We're about to win. And I'm like, Hey y'all, I need one more D ward. Can one of you guys place a ward for me? Dude buys a ward comes out of his base, puts it right in front of me and lets me destroy it. So I can get the achievement. <laughs> it was so great. That's it was awesome. Just fucking nice. Good people do exist. Even in Dota. Yes. No, no, but we no, found it's- and those that's it that's all there are in the core game i've been having really good luck this week like i've i've had a lot of really good matches a lot of really good people so far this week which is reassuring but that's all i really wanted to say there's nothing else new it's just i'm ran into good people and had really good matches nice i'm actually starting to get better at dota again i'm not as good as i used to be but i'm slowly getting back i had uh i had some good some good flips I was playing Venge, which allows you to swap heroes, like literally swap your position with theirs. And um, I I got some kills. I got a lot of assists. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, Tom had the most assists in the game. Like he fucking wrecked on that. But yeah, Dota's good shit. I still really enjoy it. And if anyone out there is a closeted Dota fan, uh, <laughs> you should let some of us know. We got a guild for 72. So just, you know, let us know. Get on in there. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. Someone else. Go, um, go, ahead. go ahead. So this week, we I, I determined that I am the best Escape from Tarkov player of all time. Oh. oh. <laughs> Should I start calling uh, no. you Landmark? Um, no, I'm actually pretty trash, but um, something really cool happened. So I'm playing with Rob, and we're, we're going through customs. We're doing our thing. Uh, we're going to the Intel building, whatever. Rob gets shot at once. And we're like, ah, crap, where is this guy? Didn't, didn't know, didn't know where he was. Couldn't figure it out. So we, we start to go around the building. All of a sudden, Rob just gets sprayed down. Rob dies. And I'm like, ah, crap. So I go around the other side of the building. And I'm peeking through the back door of the building. And I see the guy on the front door of the building. And we have a little, you know, firefight there between the doors. Um, none of the shots landed. So I'm, I'm going around the building to flank. Uh, turns out he's ready for me. He's already aiming at me. But I... I dart around the corner and I spray and I kill him. Fantastic. Uh, look around. Nobody else is around. So I go ahead and loot the body. Dog tag is level 70, which is the highest level in the game currently. So I'm like, Oh Jesus, that's amazing. Um, you know, whatever, play through the raid, kill a couple of lower level dudes or whatever. And I, I finally make it out. Um, the guy I killed level 70, had a lot of really great gear on him. He had a SA-58 completely just decked out with the, the best parts for everything with fantastic ammo and all the mags. And um, and we get done playing. I log off for the night and I'm like, hmm. A decked out SA-58 is kind of a signature gun to a particular streamer who happens to also be level 70. Oh, wait, he's streaming right now. There's no way. So, so, I, so I look at his stream and I'm going through the VOD and I'm like, oh, he, he's in customs with a, an SA-58 decked out all the way with that same site as the other guy had. Oh my God, there's Rob and I running across the thing and he p- takes that first shot at Rob. Oh my God, he sprays Rob down. 
Guys, I killed a landmark. So it's, it's <laughs> ironic. I didn't know you were going to tell that story. I mean, you said you're the best in the world. First thing I said, what, your landmark now? Yeah. Yeah, landmark, landmark is for, the best. Pretty much, yeah. Like he's his stream titles are always um he advertises that he's level seventy, which is like the highest level. And he's got fourteen thousand plus PMC kills. So that's Jeez. ridiculous. He's basically the the Tarkov PvP guy. Like it, at least if if not the best, you know, definitely top two or three or something. Like He's yeah. he's way up there and he's uh, very well renowned. So it was really cool to just happen to actually get into a, a raid with him and kill him. Like that's amazing. And obviously, like uh, ninety nine out of a hundred times, he would kill me easily. Like I'm really not very good at the game in general. Like my aim's kind of bad and whatever. But uh, you know, anything can happen in Tarkov, and and it did that raid, and it was so cool. Well, and you had done exactly what we talked about on the last podcast about corner peeking. And how you don't peek close to the corner, you actually stay away yeah. from the corner and peek. I you did. did exactly that. Yeah, I swung wide around the corner, and it, it kind of it worked. But yeah, nice. that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, that. that is like, stop playing Tarkov, <laughs> you peaked. You peaked. <laughs> I definitely peaked. I know I'll say, yeah. the uh, like, playing the last week after that, my general outlook while playing has been much more positive just because I'm still kind of... Like you digging it. It's a, it's a little bit, yeah. It's a little bit of a confidence booster, even. Yeah. Well, it's okay. You can kill me. I killed fucking landmark. Yeah. It's like that's yeah, fine. I lost a bunch of gear, but yeah, still killed landmark the other day. So I still got a level seventy dog tag <laughs> in my stash. Yeah. Which I I wish it had his name on it, but he hides his name on his stream because he gets stream sniped like crazy. So he changes his name a lot and then hides it. So unfortunately, the dog tag doesn't actually say landmark, but I'm kind of obligated not to say what it is so that he doesn't get stream sniped yeah no no i get that that's that's the honorable thing to do mm -hmm. but you gotta let me know what his name is i'm kind of curious after the cast oh okay it's i, I just want to know i'm curious on that yeah get fucked y'all <laughs> noobs <That's it. laughs> landmark sucks you know that, that no one would ever guess <laughs> but other than just that though i've been having a lot of fun with tarkov this week and i've been playing actually playing raids more instead of just logging in every day and collecting my Bitcoin and not actually playing the game. I've actually been playing the game again. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I want to, I might run a raid or two tomorrow. I've been, I've been getting a little bit of a hankering for it. Yeah. Dota grabbed you. Oh dude. Dota. Dota <laughs> this is the most Dota I've played in five years. Oh my God. Like I'm, I'm back to like 2015 Eric levels where every <laughs> night I would run two to three matches every night. There was about three or four of us that would be playing all the time. And yeah, I, I'm getting back to it right now. I only got like one full-time partner. Tom plays a decent amount with us. And so it's heroic sank, but uh, Dobby and I are playing a fuck ton. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying yeah. it though. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I, I was, okay, so here's the thing with Dota. Matches take a while, okay? And I always told myself, I like Rocket League because it's a five-minute match. Mm -hmm. So I'm not obligated to play like an hour-long match. Yeah. But I play Rocket League for three fucking hours, so what's yeah. the logic there? <laughs> What's the difference? What's the fucking logic? There, there is a difference, though. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a mental it, break in between each one. There's a mental break, yes, but that's not what I'm referring to. With I'm talking more time sync wise. Oh yeah, and but in in reality, Dota, if anything's a little bit less of a time sync, because after a really big adrenaline high or low, sometimes you decide maybe I should call it for the night. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually wear out because of the game. Yeah. Well, with with long games like that, there's the just one more game has a bigger effect on that one more Ooh. game. But with matches as short as Rocket League matches, just one more game can turn into just one more game, Ten. just one more game, just one more game, just one more game, just one more game. Well, especially when it's feeling good, man. When you're just yeah. vibing, you're hitting all your shit. Dude, I've won more game for an hour probably before. So <laughs> the thing, though, that's different between those two is that Rocket League, you can have a really, really shitty game. But you're there for five minutes. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not going to get super tilted over wasting five minutes. Who cares? 
if I've spent an hour on a Dota match and it just was a fucking drag, I don't really feel like playing another one because like the there's no quick cycle time. You can be but losing you're not, you're not... game at minute 10 that you're just not going to come back from depending on your teammates. But it's not lasting an hour. If you're that's that's one thing I will argue against. If you are in a game where it's you are not going to win, it is not going an hour. Any game it's that still, goes an like, hour, you have okay. an opportunity to win. Going going an hour, sure. Going forty minutes, which is even then, I don't think happens. because I, you, can, I still, you can hold on. Like the high ground defense is still a massive thing. Yeah, um, you can still win. I've. Today, I had a 25-minute match. That was the first match I've been in where I just fell outright. There's no way we're winning. And it was 25 minutes in and out. And we got stomped. <laughs> I mean, it was brutal. But I still feel like in bad cases, maybe a half hour, and then you'll never have a chance to win. But if you're that's going for a longer like, match... That's a six-game losing streak on Rocket League. And it feels, I would say, mostly the same. No, not six. Rocket League probably takes, honestly, closer to like eight minutes a match. Eight to ten. That's true. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a really low-scoring game. In which case, the game probably feels pretty fucking good. Zero-zero yeah. matches going the wire is a great game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never feel bad about losing 0-1. Never feel bad about it. I mean, I feel bad about it when that one is my own goal. Well, yeah. Just don't I, I, I get pissed, but I don't think that was a shitty game. I think oh, that game was fucking awesome, but fucking we lost. But yeah, um, we don't need to talk any more doters. No, they're okay. No, I want to get in here real quick. So a new game launched. Mm -hmm. uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And it's uh, in the same line of Origins and um, uh, blah, 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 uh, my God, I just blanked on the second title. Either way, the new series of Assassin's Creed. Um, Gina picked it up. So she was playing it. After the first night, I was asking her, I'm like, so what do you think? She's like, I don't know. I don't like it. It doesn't feel the same. It's weird. So like she was playing for probably about two hours and just wasn't enjoying it. She's like, I don't have the options I had in the last ones. It feels more like a God of War attempt. It doesn't feel like Assassin's Creed. It's really like claustrophobic. You're doing a lot of like raids into towers and just hack and slash, which isn't really what you're doing in Assassin's Creed. That's not the yeah. point. So like she had a lot of complaints. She was really not enjoying it. Well, she stuck with it. And then lo and behold, at about three and a half hours, the game opens up. Turns out it was a huge fucking prologue. That was three hours. The rest of the game. Jesus. So I want to bitch about that. But at the same time, I think it's starting to become a trend. Red Dead took me like four fucking hours to get through the f starting intro area. Yeah. But then, then again, Red Dead's pacing was molasses slow. I, I liked it, but it wasn't a fast-paced game. Yeah, it wasn't I a fast-paced game. But there's a difference between not being a fast-paced game and just um, like blocking you out of the way to play the game. Yeah. Like, Red Dead was slow, but at the same time, you had full things while it was slow. Except for that intro, which I still think the intro was painful. I, I like the idea of a storylized tutor tutorial. But for the love of God, don't make it three hours a slog to be able to get to the actual <laughs> game. This is starting to get fucking assess excessive. Yeah. That's a long time to invest to not even know if you like the game yet. Dude, there's going to be people that refund that shit on Steam. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, there's no way. If I have a two-hour clock on a refund and this game is nothing like I'm expecting, I'm bailing. And sadly, I mean, the game turned out to be what she was expecting. It just took three and a half fucking hours for her to get to it. Granted, she she's a um, slower-paced player. She'll look at a lot more shit, do a lot more shit. But still, mm -hmm. probably looking at like two hours if you're going quick as hell to get to the actual game. That is so, really unfortunate. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. Game sure. devs, stop some doing people, this shit. Some people might like that, though. I don't... I think it's weird to do it in a way that you're not exposing the actual game. It's okay to have tutorial area, but the mechanics of the game should still feel like the mechanics of the game. 
if that makes sense. Um, like I wouldn't want a uh, tutorial for Halo where it's point and click, <laughs> or where you're just meleeing it. Is it that, that jarring? Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. A more accurate one. A tutorial in Halo where all you're using is a sniper rifle. I think that would be a more accurate where, yes, that's something you do in the game. That is not what you're actually going to be doing most of the game. Oh. Uh, but that's all you're doing in the tutorial. Okay. Because all that's... she was doing was hand-to-hand -hand combat, going through these buildings, face-fighting people. Like, her only special ability was like a Spartan kick thing. I mean, there was nothing stealthy, assassiny about it. It was straight up, be a barbarian, raid a village, kill fuckers. And it didn't oh. until after the, like at the very end of that, she finally got the hidden blade to be able to assassinate. Once again, three hours in before you get the hidden blade. So, yeah, it's, hmm. just, it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing. I hope doesn't become more of a trend. But That's I, I just needed to get complaint. that out there. Yeah. So if you're, if you're looking to pick up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, make sure you are prepared for a... You know, give if if you really really want to know what the game's all about, give it more than three hours. And I will say, she's been enjoying the shit out of the game, but she hated that first part. Like, if she didn't already buy the game, I don't think she would have bought the game, like that bad. So, just Ooh. beware. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. What you guys got? I bought a game this week. Mm. I and, also bought a game this and week, and I had a the opposite. Thing happened where I liked it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was I was in Discord uh, just kind of hanging out, and Acro was streaming that game in Discord for us. And within watching him play it for about ten minutes, I was on the Steam window hitting purchase for myself, <laughs> and I Love jumped it. right in. So, <laughs> Proteus, P R O D. That's with a D. Yeah, that's the D. It, it, with the T, I also own, but that's a non-violent retro-styled uh, adventure game. Oh, first -person adventure this game. is the okay, hold on. Okay, so this is the absolute opposite of that. So, yeah, so let me ask. Game. It you said it's spelled D O O M? No, it's, it's very no, no, close. No. It's R O D E U S. Okay. Yeah, I, I still it, think it, it might be spelled D O O M, but carry it's, on. It's spelled <laughs> U A K E. Yeah, yeah, I can well, see okay, that so, spelling possibly too. Yeah. All right, the game is very, very heavily and shamelessly uh, influenced by Doom 2016 and the old Dooms. Um, but yeah, it's it's a retro first person shooter with, uh, you know really nice visuals and sound with a soundtrack that's similar to doom 2016 and uh the visuals do this yeah. like like all the enemies are still sprites but it's a 3d first person shooter with nice lighting and stuff so it's got a really cool cool style to it to me to look at it it looks like everything you would want done to og doom in a modern era it looks beautiful. Exactly. It's still pixely 2D, but it's actual aiming, not doom aiming. So mm -hmm. Proteus is more inspired by Brutal Doom than Classic yeah. Doom. It Brutal is, doom is unreasonably doom. violent. Yeah. So like your shotgun will literally make people explode into blood fountains. Um, you like can. There's, it's actually way more high fidelity than even Brutal Doom is. So if you have an imp who's using both arms to throw fireballs at you, you can shoot him in one of the arms and literally take his arm off. And then he can't use that to attack anymore. Um, oh, nice. So the, uh, the game is... I'm going to disagree with Adam. I don't think it's inspired by Doom 2016 at all. I think it's inspired by Brutal Doom and OG Doom. Because where Doom 2016 is all adrenaline all the time, every gun is valid in every situation, Proteus does not think like that. Um, depending on who you're going up against, the ammo available, and what weapons you currently have, there is a, a better way. I'm not going to say a right way, because you can tackle any objective with any gun, 
but you're going to have a bad time. If you're in a room with a whole bunch of people really close knit together, super tight hallways, rocket launchers or grenade launchers probably aren't the play. You can, you'll die, but it's not really recommended. Rocket launcher, um, not the play. You don't know me, sir. Right? So depending on the enemies you're going up against, there will be differences in how you approach certain situations. Doom 2016 did not have that, and that's one of the chief complaints that many people had about the game, which is it's not as smart or brainy as the original Doom. It's really dumb. It's great, but you don't have to think about anything when you're playing Doom 2016. So what difficulty level are you playing on? Hard. Okay. See, I just... I think I'm playing on hard. I just went medium. So I'm playing really casually. Oh, no, I'm doing and it's... Dusk on hard. I'm doing Proteus on medium. Okay. Cause, um, and maybe you're probably a lot further than me. You might have beat it by now. Um, no, no. I've only played that. probably four stages, four or five tops. Um, but I'm, I'm just kind of like... I'm just chilling. Like, it's not particularly difficult. Um, at least not on that really difficulty. Tense. But... It gets really tense, though. Yeah, I, but I, like, I'm just not finding the necessity to use specific guns for specific situations. Like, I haven't died okay. once at all. And I've just been basically uh, using whatever I feel like and whatever I have ammo for. You haven't gotten the sniper rifle or the chaos rifle yet, have you? No, no. Okay, all right. Nope, I got the, the most recent gun I got was the rocket launcher and the Gatling gun. Which, okay. the way they introduced the Gatling gun is fantastic. It is the best Gatling gun <laughs> introduction in any game I've ever played, ever. ever. It's, it's straight to the point. Really? It's straight to the point. You get to this big open area, you fight, you fight all these demons and this guy with the Gatling gun, and you kill him, and he drops the Gatling gun. And you're like, all right, let me pick this bad boy up. Uh, you open the door to the next stage, and what's what's the room that you go into? Oh, it's a long corridor hallway with a whole lot of enemies packed into it in one small yep. area. Oh, okay. Nice. This is how the Gatling gun works. Gatling gun goes, bird. <laughs> and then you fight and then train cars full of these yeah, enemies. Exactly. With the gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's perfect. And there is... So they set up a room for you just to mow people yeah, down just so yeah. you feel yep. how visceral that gun is. Mm -hmm. yep. And to give you an idea of how gory and unnecessarily violent the game is, I think each enemy has about three to four people worth of blood in them. Yes. Like, there there are some laws of physics being defied here based on the, the just sheer volume of liquid expelling from these bodies. And... It, because it's influenced by Brutal Doom, when you kill somebody, it's not just, oh, cool, blood fountain. It literally paints the entire room and your gun and your character with blood. So, yeah, you walk up somebody point blank and you shotgun them. Um, it's going to be all over you. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to spray. Yeah. A lot. So I do, um, I do have to call out the sound design and how fantastic it is. Yeah. Uh, so... I mean, the music is fantastic, too, and you can tell it's very heavily inspired in that sense by Doom 2016. It's very it's, much a heavy metal with industrial electronic elements. Um, and then, um, but the sound design in general is fantastic. The guns feel and sound just absolutely powerful. Oh, they are chunky. I mean, even the, even the starting pistol sounds mean. It, you can yeah. almost feel it in your chest when you shoot these guns. It's fantastic. It's so satisfying. And you can pull off headshots, which is something that you couldn't do in OG Doom. In OG Doom, everybody was just one big hitbox. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Proteus, yeah, if you want to take out somebody quickly, you got to be accurate, which is actually kind of cool. Um, yeah. And also, OG Doom, you didn't have uh, vertical aiming, if I remember right. It was just all horizontal. Yeah. Right, right. Like, there could be an enemy above you, but you would just aim at your same spot at the ground, and it would end up hitting them. Yeah. Have you messed with the so, level yes. editor yet? Uh, I did. I loaded it up and played with it for, like, five minutes today. Mm -hmm. um, it looks relatively well-featured. Um like, not like game engine well featured, but yeah, if you want to build Doom or Quake or Hexen or Dusk, yeah, that's probably pretty easy to do. Um, 
I did play a lot of custom maps. So one thing that this game has is super, super easy access to the workshop map. You click online, you click browse maps, and you can start by like hottest, most downloaded, highest rated. Um, after you play a map, even in the single player campaign, it'll say, hey, rate this map. Good, okay, or great. And then you can browse around and play, play custom maps. So I played uh, the Doom 1 intro, so E1M1. And then I played the Doom 2016 intro. And by God, both feel really, really, really good to play in Proteus. Um, I also played a fully custom map where you were running around on top of semi-truck trailers on a moving highway, going from truck to truck with limited ammo, trying to hit your shots and dodge while not falling into the street to your death below. It was oh. fucking incredible. That Holy sounds fun. Shit. Um, and here's the best part. They decided to go full Mario Maker 2. All those custom maps, you can combine them into a custom campaign, which is also easily browsable and downloadable from within the game itself. That's cool. It is cool. really fucking cool. So yeah, I'll, hey, do you want to build all of Quake 2? You can. <laughs> That's uh, really fucking cool so, that they're doing So that. it's worth mentioning that the game is in early access, and I can't tell at all. Yeah, I have I not seen that. any bugs whatsoever. It feels I like a I have seen one, and game. they fixed it already. Okay. <laughs> like, is I'm it surprised. early access more because they have more content they want to put out? Yes. Probably, yeah. Yeah, they, they have said, hey, the campaign's a little short right now. We're working on it. All right. All right. Cool, guys. That, so it's like the best case early access. And it's not super, super yeah. short. Like, I think I've played a couple hours now, and I still haven't gotten the gun that you're talking about. So. Yeah. So Proteus is in an interesting spot as far as shooters go. And I wanted to rant a little bit on this, because um, I've also been playing a lot of Dusk, which is, I can't say it was inspired by Quake. It's is built from a template that is quake um <laughs> I, I mean it's it's quake through and through like the weapons aren't as interesting as quake but the level design is very quake um the enemy design is quake the visuals are quake the sound is quake um and like it, it takes even the bad parts of old school shooters and implements them faithfully like multiplayer and single player having different executables well that was an old thing oh. so we're gonna do the old thing um, and, yeah. you know, some bad things like, hey, uh, we're not going to give you a continue button. We're going to give you a load game button. It's like, OK, I'm loading the same file all the time, but that's that's fine. I guess I can do that. And even when you launch Dusk, it goes through a DOS boot up screen. Like it is an old school shooter made in 2018. Um, and then I decided to play. I went the opposite direction. I apparently had it thank god because i wasn't going to pay 60 dollars for it which is apparently the price still apparently i had call of duty world war ii in my inventory and i'm not sure why oh um huh so i decided to play that um and you know i enjoyed the hell out of it i'm enjoying the fuck out of this call of duty um a because it it feels really kind of old school um, in in a thematic way. Like, I grew up playing Medal of Honor and the old Call of Duties, and going back to World War II in a new bombastic setting is pretty fucking cool. Uh, except when I tried to play the game instead of watch the game. Um, I died a lot. I'm <laughs> playing Call of Duty on hard mode, uh, or hardened difficulty, and any time I wasn't on the path or following the little scripted sequence... I was dying because I'm not playing Call of Duty right. Oh, hey, you're trying to sit back and provide sniper support? No, we're just going to kill you. We're just going to kill you. That's not how you play. you got to go over here so the train can derail and your buddy can pull you out before you get squashed. Um, like, it's... Call of Duty, I can't say, like, it's a super immersive game. I don't feel... It doesn't feel gamey to me, if that makes any sense. It feels more like a big-ass interactive movie. It's nice. I'm having fun, but it's a roller coaster, right? Mm -hmm. You follow the track. You can see where it's leading. It does go there. And it's a good time. You're throwing your hands in the air. You're waving around and screaming. But <laughs> you don't really have a whole lot of agency, right? You, you are on the roller coaster ride, watching the movie, doing the scripted events, because that's what Call of Duty wants you to do. 
It's a hell of a roller coaster, though. God damn. Uh, it is it is a lot of fun. It's impactful when it needs to be. Um, the Normandy landing, the first fucking mission in the game was goddamn intense. You're in the boat and your your teammates are getting torn apart next to you. Um, like it's it's kind of intense. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, but it's a roller coaster, and there's only one way to ride a roller coaster. You go down the rails. Um, well, and also it's going to be a roller coaster because COD, yeah, they're still putting out campaigns. That's not their focus in development, most part. Exactly, exactly. You're not going to get a giant like meaty campaign. But- Except for one level where they decide to be inspired. Because the one level where Call of Duty World War II is inspired uh, is in this sneaking mission. So mandatory stealth and a first-person shooter is usually fucking dog shit. The way they handle this is interesting. So you're a spy for the French resistance. You've got your papers. And the game allows you to read your papers and memorize these facts. When you walk up to people, when you do something that's kind of suspicious because you are a spy you don't really know how to fit in... Um, the Nazis will say, Hey, um, where's, or where's your, where's your papers? You hand over your papers. And the guy's like, Hmm, you, uh, you grew up over here. Right. And your papers clearly say born in Hamburg. And you're like, no, 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 Hamburg. It's like, Oh, Oh, sorry. I must have misread. Of course, Hamburg. So you actually have to memorize your papers and backstory to accomplish like these basically knowledge quizzes along the way to keep up your disguise. It's pretty cool. Um, So it leads you through this whole thing where you're setting up this mission. You get done with the stealth section and now you're on the American side and you are like marching through blowing shit up. It's a big bombastic finish to this one place where you finish sneaking around and feeling very, uh, very underpowered to then feeling very overpowered or appropriately powered, taking back this fortress. Uh, It's pretty cool. Uh, so I, I am enjoying it there. So where Proteus fits into this is that Dusk, to me, represents like the old school, here is a 90s shooter, unapologetic. Call of Duty World War II is this big, bombastic roller coaster of, yeah, we can't really call it a game, but you're going to basically do a walking simulator and shoot some Nazis. Um, and that's cool, too. Proteus is this interesting blend of, we want to take the design aesthetics from old school shooters and mix it with really nice um, quality of life and, and modern game design sensibilities. If you are craving old school Doom, but you want that new school polish, Proteus is this perfect middle ground between those two extremes. Um, and believe it or not, I don't think the enemies are sprites. They do use sprites, but I think they're actually 3D models that they then use a rendering layer on top of mm, to pixelize. Yeah. And that's how they're getting lighting effects on. So like there's actual bump maps, lighting effects, and lighting changes on the sprites as they're walking around, depending on like what you're firing. If a rocket goes past them, they're like glowing red as as the, the flame gets closer to them. Yeah. It's really, really cool. It is a technical goddamn achievement. Um I Proteus has got to be one of my favorite things to come out this year. It is really, really excellent. Um, so if if you tried Dust and you couldn't really get into it because it was too old school, but you want something more than the roller coaster, check it out. It's fairly cheap and it's fucking excellent. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I'm loving it so far. Yeah, I was. Um, I saw it and I was like, damn, that looks good. I mean, yeah. it just, yeah. it, you should try it. <laughs> it knows what it's going for and it does it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, believe it or not, no, hang on, hang on. I'm going to work one more in here. Uh, it actually reminds me of Dark Souls a little bit because as you're going through <laughs> these levels, you get like really far out of the way, right? Really far so... out of the way. Like, hey, I've got, no, I've got this red key card. Shit, I got to go all the way back because the red door is on the other side of the lo- Wait, what's this? Oh, I just hop up here and it's literally a shortcut to drop you back right to where you need to go, only accessible through the red key card. So the level design loops back on itself to keep the pacing high and keep backtracking to a minimum. It is fucking excellent game design. The level design is really good. I'm I'm never lost, but I'm always yeah. I don't know. You're they, never just, they do a really good job of of 
intuitively showing you where you need to go without pointing a big arrow saying, hey, go this way. You're never lost in a game that uses multicolored key cards. Keep that in mind. There is no reason why the level design should be as good as it, as good as it is. Mm -hmm. Except for it's 2020 and level design should be thought out part of their game. I mean, if you're going for old school, it's really hard to fall into that trap. And don't get me wrong. I love Dusk. Dusk is fantastic for what it is. It's an old school shooter made to run on modern PCs. And that's what you're getting. That's what it says on the tin. Proteus is this weird blend of the things we loved about old school games with modern design and ease of use. Yeah. Sounds right. about right. <laughs> yep. All right, so on to the next. Yes, on to the next. I'll let you take this, Adam. Yes, it's time. For what? It's time. Is it's, it? It's time for the plays it's of the month montage. Uh, these are the best plays of our community for the month of October. We're a week late on this one. Sorry, everybody. But um, yeah, if you would like to submit some clips... Um, you can do that on our Discord. We have a Plays of the Day channel. Um, these can be for any game. Most of these are usually Rocket League just because our community you know, sways pretty heavily into Rocket League. But um, any game works. Uh, send us some clips. Eric will post them on the Twitter. Uh, he'll post funny ones, good plays, skillful stuff, whatever. But we pick the, the, the coolest and best plays um, for the, the monthly montage. So let's roll that beautiful footage. Hell yeah. Here we go. I had to hit that twice. <laughs> oh shit, it's burb. This is stupid. So stupid. This is how they won OT. This is a winner. <laughs> what the hell? When the whiff ends up being the best pre-read of all time? Yeah. I love how this shot happens. This is so nice. <laughs> oh, that is great. Fucking turtle it. Fuller knows what he wants. Just sets it up. Hype. Oi. Up the wall. Throw a little twizzler in there. Damn. Look, the Carry little, it in. A little twisty. A little twisty. I'm really Are bad at getting these out of make these shots. <laughs> he made it look good. Yeah, he did. Here's Ty. Then here's Ty. And unnamed person. Oh, okay. Tactical pinch. I like it. Damn. Totally by design. Jo Josh, Josh and I used to call those the Top Gun. <laughs> yes. Because of that opening scene with the camera. Cathod. Like it's it's an entire play, man. man. That, nice. This whole play is really nice. Like this is a yeah. quick read of a pass right there. Also, his teammate being in an offensive position while on defense like that, risky as fuck. <laughs> Ooh, oh, a hoops bro. clip. Wow. In the hoops. Oh, my. Oh, my nice. God. Look where he jumps. He jumps from the defensive board. From the board. back wall. God, God damn, Acro. So this one was submitted by a... Uh, Guild and Giraffe with the fantastic pass up. And then Quantico with the, the drop down into the net. Like to get up on top of this in time. Like not redirect this cross. You have to redirect it down. Yeah. yeah. How do you even do that? Slugger at number three. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. oh here we go. Oh, he's getting some oh. Twizzler in there. He's oh. just dancing on him. Look at him. He's just dancing. Look at him. Just Look at him. Don't mind me while I use all my boost to make it look good. 
Oh, Shaq. Oh, a Valorant clip. Note, that first kill was first of five. Like, there's still four more. There's two. Wait, is Shaq just one Three. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Spike plant. Planting, planting, planting. Nice okay. added, Adam. Oh, there's Take four. Off. Five. Oh my God. Fucking clutch. It's too, too easy. Out. It's too easy for him. It's too good. Style. It's better be stylish. Number one. It's already oh, stylish. Look how Man. early he got. Oh, off. okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't think his teammate didn't know he was passing before Style knew he was passing. <laughs> <laughs> That's called reading the future. This man's time traveling. Oh, out here. <laughs> God, oh my that God! Nasty. That's beautiful. All right, so I've uh, just got to do this quick disclaimer again. So in our Discord, which hopefully we'll have a nice vanity URL for y'all here soon to make it easy. But until then, get to our Discord. Links are everywhere. It'll probably blow you right now. And under plays of the day, put all your badass, funny, awful clips you want. I promise you, I will look at every single one of those clips. So if it's funny, if it's good, if it's just mediocre even, throw them in there. They'll get reviewed. Our Twitter will get all sorts of different ones. We'll do funny ones, serious ones, whatever. So don't feel like you need to be some pro-tier Jacob RL kind of player in here. Anyone can get this shit. So post your shit. We'll look at it. We'll throw it up there. And style, good fucking job. Oof. Nice job. All right. Well, fellas, back, 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 back to the stuff. Back to the yeah. stuff. Has anybody played anything else this week? Um, I did. I I played a, a small amount of Population One, the VR Battle Royale game. Uh, I played it with Magic Dave, and I I gotta say, I really like Population One. It just feels good to play. Um, like it's it's a little janky. Uh, any game that's going to be in VR that doesn't have like a massive dev team behind it is going to feel a little janky. Uh, but frankly, it's fantastic. Uh, it still has people playing it. Um, it's just a lot of fun to jump in and, you know, your team versus a world battle royale in a, an Apex Legends kind of setting with Apex Legends kind of guns. Um, it so, does yeah, look I, a I lot. It should, I mean, it should, Jeezy. It does look a lot like Apex to me, in a good way. Like, yeah. I think Apex is my favorite of the Battle Royales out right now. Yeah. And it, it really does kind of give that vibe. And the thing I think it's a differentiator is that Apex movement itself is a lot of fun. Like, literally just running around the map is fun to do. Uh, yes. In PUBG, it's it's not. There's, there's maps where you hold W until you die. <laughs> That's that's D the game. W and shift. Yeah, W and shift. And, and you run, to, and that's that's it. Um, yeah. And in Apex, not nah, you're jumping around, you're sliding, you're crouching everywhere. Um, it feels almost like tribes, and, and less like a battle royale game. Um, well, that's why Peacemaker, Peacekeeper, the robot dude. That's why he was so much yeah. fun, man. That grappling hook all over the place. Dude, that grapple is great. That grapple also, is so much fun. Fuck me. Why did I miss that shot? That was perfect. It's all right. It happens to the best. It happens. And the worst um, of us. Yeah. 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 A little Mostly. more often for the worst of us. So uh, anyway, um, population one, uh, I mentioned before that you can stretch out your arms like in T-pose your way to victory. When you stretch out your arms, it uh, it makes you glide. So you can get on top of a building or a rock and glide around. And the game in the downtime is more or uh, it, it's less about hiding or grabbing loot and more about effective movement. OK, what thing is is at a, a higher point than I am right now? OK, well, now I need to climb to the top of that thing and then spread my arms out and fly to the next thing and then climb on top of that. And it becomes a game of efficient movement to get yourself into a better position instead of just running around it's a lot of fun so uh yeah if you're looking for a vr battle royale to play with your buds check out population one it looks good and i will say one thing about the t-pose to victory 
it's a little corny, but dear God, once you open up for a wingsuit, you it, it looked to me anyway that you gain speed. Yeah, yeah, like, you do. It's you gain lot. speed. Yeah. You are always better to fly than, than run around. There were people today that decided to climb this big-ass tower because they were out of position, and uh, they literally were flying around the map. Everybody was looking up and taking pot shots at them, trying to knock them out of the sky. But... Uh, it was it was great. They did end up uh, getting a better place than we did. So, yeah. Well, other than that, um, that's all I, I I don't have any game other games. Um, did you have any other games, Adam? Um, not really. I played I think a couple rounds of Phasmophobia before the update, so I didn't get to see the the new stuff. Yeah. Um. What else did I play this way? I think that's about it. Rocket League. Nothing. All right. Nothing. Nothing more new or or notable, really. And um, we don't really have any notable news outside of like there were some game drops, like Valhalla dropped, uh, the new Call of Duty, um, Cold War dropped, and um, Demon Souls remaster dropped. And Demon's, uh, the, the new Demon cons- Souls remaster looks gorgeous graphically. Yeah, it does. Um, but those are out. Cold War uh, is the only one I saw so far. Uh, seven out of ten on IGN, so it may not be getting the love that the more modern uh, Call of Duties have been getting. Oh, that's um, no, nah, it may be the first one to kind of tank since Advance Wars. I mean, nah. So didn't World War Two kind of tank? I think people enjoyed the multiplayer of that. Oh, it didn't do fantastic. Um. But like Black Ops, Black Ops as a Call of Duty series has always been kind of a, aside from the first one, it was always kind of the also ran. Right? It's like, ah, oh, well, all right. Well, I, I like the second one. The second a one lot was of people, a lot of fun. I think a lot of people that are into Call of Duty really like the Black Ops series. Yeah. The, one and two were both really good. Fine. Two, yeah, three was a garbage fire. Well, this is three, I thought. Four doesn't know how Roman numerals work. <laughs> this is not three. There was four, wasn't there? I thought there was a Black Ops four. I'm pretty sure this that, is the third that's, one. That's but the thing. like, who the fuck knows? They're all the same game. <laughs> I mean, it's Call of Duty. It's not like Call of Duty, like 2002. Like, just tack a name or a year onto well, it. Do the Madden dance. Call it done. Well, this is because of narratives. Because the story is supposed to be the same, and it's a post World War or a Cold War era bullshit, blah de blah de blah. Anyway, it's it is what it is. It's out. Uh, the consoles are out. Um, Microsoft had to put out a warning to tell people don't blow vape smoke into your Xbox. Oh my God. Um, I I say they shouldn't have done that, and anyone who does it and it fucks up their console, tough shit. Because you shouldn't have to tell people not to blow smoke into their fucking consoles. Why? Yeah, that's silly. I saw uh, I saw a post where somebody had done that and then claimed that they were having overheating issues and that it was smoking. Oh, cheap. Uh, people are the fucking worst. Um, we you're kind of bearing the lead though because uh, the new Xbox has a feature that no other console has had before. You can actually float a ping pong ball on top of it through the exhaust port. So I think they've had their um, generation. They have had their share of uh, overheating consoles. And I think they oversized the shit out of the fans to try to not have it happen again. (laughs) Yeah. Which good on them. This is fine. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. As long as they don't sound like a fucking jet engine taking off. Good on them. I don't know. You couldn't do much worse than the PS4 Pro. God damn. I don't know. The Switch. For what the <laughs> switch is, the switch is loud as shit when those fans That's kick true. out. Ah, uh, well. Uh, do you guys have anything else? I think. No, oh, that's all I got. Yeah. Mm. Um, quick notes. Uh, initially, I was going to do some Dota after, but some people brought up Jackbox, so uh, I'll be milling it around in the Discord. Try to see if people are up for Jackbox. If not, Dota. If not, Phasma. Something. There's going to be some games. Stick around. Jump in the Discord if you're interested in some games. We'll figure out what we're going to do. Um, all right, I got that PSA out there. Uh, you guys good or you want me to run down? I'm good. I'm good. Do the rundown. Okay. Well, 
for all of you over here on Twitch watching us live right now. Thank you very much. But we also have YouTube. And finally, my lazy ass got to work and started clipping out videos. So starting Monday, we'll be back on our normal video cycle. So uh, go over to our YouTube, 72 Pin Connector. You'll see our uh, beautiful monthly montage of top plays. You're going to see some podcast clips so you don't have to watch the whole fucking two-hour thing. And you're going to see the whole podcast just in case you want to see the whole two-hour thing. That said, if you're going to be jumping over there and that's where you're watching us right now, thank you. But we are live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can come in, be part of the chat, snipe our lobby, play Rocket League with us. It's the most enjoyable way to be a part of the podcast, hands down. We also have our Twitter that we've referenced multiple times, uh, 72PC underscore official, plays of the day, tournament updates, except for today. Uh, we were off the ball today. Um, and actually remind me to, before we sign off to update that. Um, and yeah, so just jump over to our Twitter. We have a Discord, links everywhere. Really fucking awesome dudes all over, playing all sorts of games. Jump in, you'll find someone you like there. And then finally, we have a website, 72pickconnector.com. It'll link you everywhere. Um, I did want to uh, update real quick. So calls for the winter splits were today. We advanced to day four. So um, congrats, Ty, Jacob, Seabass. You guys did fucking awesome. Josh is saying they were fucking killing it. So tomorrow is a triple elimination. We just need to make top eight, and we're in the main event. So it's looking fucking good. I think Jacob called out in chat that if they just win one game, they're in, I believe. So either way, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> just You guys are just kicking ass. Loving it. <laughs> Stumbled over words. And all that said, um, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So, um, Adam, I'll let you um, finish her off. Yeah. So we'll end it with the uh, we'll play the top 10 plays of October again and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining.